All right, coming in at number 10, we have the Winchester House USA. After the death of her husband and child, Sarah Winchester, the wife of a rifle maker's son, consulted a seer who proclaimed her family had been killed by the ghosts of those who died of bullets from her family's guns. The seer suggested that only perpetual construction on the family's mansion could nullify the spirits. So that's what Sarah Winchester ordered. Workmen labored on the property every hour of every day for 38 years. The 160 room estate in San Jose, California was built entirely without the aid of blueprints. And it's truly bizarre. Some of the creepier features are staircases that lead nowhere, doors that open to brick walls, or sudden 10 foot drops, and a window with an etched glass spider web motif. You definitely don't want to get lost in this maze of a house. Let's make our way over to Poveglia Island in Italy. In the south lagoon between Venice and Lido sits the small Italian island of Poveglia. In 1348, the bubonic plague arrived in Venice and Poveglia Island became a quarantine colony. Venice exiled many of its symptom-bearing citizens there where the dead and those too sick to protest were burned on giant pyres. In the late 1800s, the areas mentally ill resided in an asylum on Poveglia. There are rumors that in the 1930s, a doctor performed strange experiments on the patients here. Eventually, the doctor went mad and threw himself from the asylum's tall bell tower. Though the bell in the tower was removed decades ago, locals still claim to hear its chimes echo from the lonely island. Today, the entire island is abandoned. Locals and tourists are prohibited from visiting and fishermen steer clear of the accursed place. Italian construction crews attempted to restore the former hospital building, but abruptly stopped without explanation, leaving locals to speculate that they were driven away by the island's dark forces. Next, we're going to be talking about Raynham Hall in England. Raynham Hall is an estate in the Norfolk, England, haunted by the Brown Lady. The estate is supposedly haunted by Dorothy Townsend, who was abused by her husband, Viscount Townsend, in the early 1700s. According to the legend, Dorothy's husband married her in 1713, then locked her in Raynham Hall. He supposedly buried her alive in 1726. Her ghostly appearance on the property in the 1820s caused all the staff to permanently leave the estate. In 1936, two photographers captured the most famous ghost picture of all time, showing the brown lady on the oak staircase in the main hall. Photography experts say the photograph is genuine and there is no explanation for the apparition. All right, let's take a trip to the Lizzie Borden House USA. Today, this allegedly haunted bed and breakfast in Fall River, Massachusetts is the site of a gruesome and highly publicized murder that occurred in 1892. Although she was acquitted, Lizzie Borden was suspected of murdering her father and stepmother with a hatchet in their unassuming home. Although there wasn't enough evidence to convict her at the time, suspicions of her guilt remained. Since then, guests have reported all manner of strange sightings in the house. For anyone intrigued by unsolved crimes and brave enough to risk an encounter with the supernatural, this is an ideal destination. All right, up next we have Casa Loma in Canada. From strange apparitions to spooky voices and unseen grabbing hands, Casa Loma Castle in Toronto, Ontario, Canada has more than its share of ghost stories. Staff and guests at the historic castle have shared enough stories of seeing a mysterious lady dressed in white on the second floor, hearing the mutters and sighs of a crotchety man near the stables, the appearance of a man tending to the gardens near the indoor conservatory, the sound of children's voices when no children are around, or the feeling of being grabbed or pulled in the tunnels leading to the stables. 
These and other paranormal experiences have gained the castle a reputation as a supernatural hotspot. The castle even offers ghost tours led by Canada's Most Haunted. Nature lovers might not be so in love with this one, Tao Don Park, Vietnam. Tao Don Park in Ho Chi Minh City is a paradise for those who love natural beauty in the day, taking walks amidst tropical trees, but by night, a different feeling overcomes the park. Considered one of Vietnam's most haunted spots, Tao Don Park is said to be haunted by a ghost who roams the park in search of his lover. According to a tale, the couple were enjoying a picnic more than a decade ago when they were attacked. The woman ran off and escaped, but her partner was killed trying to protect her. There are frequent reported sightings of the man wandering the park at dusk, there one moment and then mysteriously vanishing the next. Creepy, right? All right, and coming in at number four, we have the Akershus Fortress in Norway. This medieval castle once served as a defense stronghold for the city of Oslo, and it is rumored to be the most haunted place in Norway. The most popular sightings include a demon dog with glowing eyes that is said to guard the gates to the castle, as well as the ghost of a woman with no facial features who appears out of the darkness in a long robe. Used as a prison for Norway's most infamous criminals, the site of many World War II executions as well, the sounds of prison chains rattling can be heard around the property. All right, let's take a trip to Hoya Bachu Forest, Romania. Known by many as the Bermuda Triangle of Romania, this forest is considered the most haunted in the world. Warped trees fill the forest, their skeletal figures twisting and spiraling, an eerie silence fills the air interrupted only by the footsteps of unseen figures. Visitors often report intense feelings of anxiety and the feelings of being watched while traveling through the forest. Some of the most common sightings include ghosts, unexplained apparitions, faces appearing in photographs that were not visible with the naked eye, and even rumors of alien encounters. All right, let's continue our journey with Lawang Sewu, Indonesia. The former railway building and World War II prison is believed to be the most haunted place in Indonesia. Indonesia. Among the many ghosts that have been reported here, the most popular are the Dutch woman, a headless spirit, and a Kuntalanak, a female vampiric ghost in Malaysian and Indonesian mythology. It is here that prisoners and prisoners of war were tortured and hung from iron beams in the ceilings. It is rumored that guests who stand below these beams are in for a haunting experience. Many of the locals refuse to enter this house for fear of a ghost attaching themselves to them. They warn all those who wish to visit this building, however, this has never deterred the visitors. Visitors have reported hearing pained cries and anguished screams coming from the basement. And all the way down at number one today, we have the Island of the Dolls in Mexico. Xochimilco, Mexico is primarily known for its Island of the Dolls. This tiny island is famous for the hundreds of decaying dolls and doll parts hanging from trees and scattered among the grass. Although it looks more like a horror movie set than anything else, the island used to be the actual residence of a now deceased man named Julian Santa Barrera. After finding a dead girl's body in a nearby canal, Barrera collected and displayed the toys in the hopes of warding off evil spirits. The disturbing sounds of crying children have been heard by those brave enough to venture the island. So let's start with the first one. You guys know my pal Leroy, who is the black guy on the channel, and I'm the white guy. Oddly enough, I call myself Mr. Black, he calls himself Mr. White. I know. Weird. So I'm taking a story from Jamaica. But when it comes to where Leroy's from, Jamaica, man, it's got one really famous haunted place, and that is called Rose Hall. Now, apparently, Rose Hall is haunted by a ghost named Annie Palmer, which, oddly enough, they call the White Witch. Weird. Now, Rose Hall was initially built in the 1770s, but nowadays it's practically a resort. And a really nice one of that. You can go do some serious golfing. Yo, by the way, if any of you guys are golfers, hit that like button. Seriously, did nobody hit the like button there? Right. Because golf, 
those pants. They're just too goofy. Now, currently, it is owned by Miss World USA, <laughs> Michelle Rollins. But as for the ghost, well, got some bad news because it's really not real. Now, it was fictionalized from a Jamaican novel called The White Witch of Rose Hall by Herbert G. DeLisser. Now, it was published in 1929, and yes, yeah, some people still say, oh, well, he got it from a story of a ghost that was in Rose Hall. So, maybe that's true, but that is where the story really blew up from. Now, keep in mind, there was a woman that did exist, and her name was Rosa. But unlike the ghost in the story, they didn't share very similar character traits. But who knows? What do you think? Haunted, yay or nay? Now guys, we gotta move on to number two because first of all, I might be related to this lady. We're talking about the brown lady of Rhinum Hall. Now her actual name is Lady Dorothy Walpole. That's right, Walpole for the win, yeah! <laughs> so, that's right, oh, us Walpoles, we definitely would be scaring people after we die because we, uh, we just <laughs> love getting under people's skin. Now the hall was completed in 1637 and for 400 years it was owned by the Townsend home. Now Dorothy Walpole, she was the sister of the first Prime Minister of England, and that was Robert Walpole. Dude, I got royalty in me too? This is awesome! Now, as for Dorothy, she is probably the most famous ghost in the entire world. You probably have seen this image before, and yeah, it's terrifyingly creepy. That staircase? No thanks. It's not like Gone with the Wind where you're carrying a beautiful dame up the staircase. This one, you're running away from the staircase. Now, this photo was taken in 1936, and the story is that Dorothy committed adultery with a man by the name of Lord Wharton. And when her husband Charles Townsend found out, he locked her in a room where she died from starvation. Now, the first person to see the ghost of Dorothy was Lucia C. Stone during a Christmas gathering in 1835. Whew! Just scary! No, get me out of this video! Ah! Now for number three, let's go down under. We're talking about the Princess Theatre in Melbourne, Australia. Now, this theatre sat 1,488 people when it opened in 1854. Now, it is the oldest continuing entertainment theatre in all of Australia. By 1885, it was under the hands of new management, but the theatre had become run down, so the owners demolished it and rebuilt a new one the following year. And where the ghost stories come from is all because of March 3rd, 1888. Woo! Got it right. This is where Frederick Baker was performing the opera Faust. He apparently fell into a trap door and suffered a severe heart attack. He was immediately taken to the hospital, but his cast and crew were like, no, he was there for the final bow. And since then, there have been numerous sightings of Frederick, but the theater honors his death by having an open spot for him at every single showing. Okay, next one, we're talking about the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. It is the creepiest place on earth. <laughs> You know when you talk about insane asylums? Yo, that's kind of what it is. Although it's not actually an insane asylum, it's a tuberculosis hospital. Just as creepy, right? Because let's be honest, you can't talk about haunted places without an abandoned hospital. Now this is one of my personal favorites because it is just so creepy, I would love to film a movie there. I've always wanted to go, but I've never had the time. Now it was originally built in 1910 in Jefferson County. Jefferson County had become ravaged by the disease of tuberculosis and they needed a hospital quick. However, around 1961, the site actually closed because, well, they developed an antibiotic to fight off tuberculosis. However, it was reopened in 1962 as a geriatric center, but it closed in 1982 due to patient neglect. Now, since then, there has been a lot of attempts to reopen this building. However, in 2001, it was purchased by Tina and Charlie Mattingly, who now use the site for ghost tours and spend their earned money on restoring the site. And as a matter of fact, you can see they've even put in new windows. Hooray! 